suicide is painless. It brings on many changes. All right, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this wolf pack. This was a depressing episode, but a damn fine tragedy. A Stop at Willoughby is one of Rod Serling's most controversial stories, since it explores something many movies and TV shows were too afraid to discuss. Suicidal thoughts and sadness. And boy howdy did the Twilight Zone do a fantastic job at diving into this concept, because this was one of those themes that wasn't as relevant back when it came out, yet highly powerful now than ever. In this tale of suspense, we follow a struggling ad exec dubbed Gart Williams, who is slowly losing his mind, having frequent anxiety attacks, meltdowns, and displays clear signs of what we now know as warnings of suicidal tendencies. Basically, Gart puts up with a dillweed Benson of a boss who constantly demands too much of him and has a bitchy bitch horrible wife always nagging him to be the way she wants him to act. Must have been her and her constant womanly demands. As Gart's suffering goes on, he begins to have hallucinations during his train rides home where he sees a wondrous peaceful little mountain town named Willoughby an inviting utopia where all the townsfolk are kind-hearted, there's nary a problem in the world, and it's full of an upbeat aura that can turn the saddest person's frown upside down. But whenever he considers visiting this Willoughby, he snaps back to reality, questioning whether or not if it was all just a dream or not. Now, the majority of this tale is Gart getting put down by his jerk boss and jerk wife before crossing paths with Willoughby, all while Mr. Williams' insecurities up the pressure. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this episode surprisingly feels like an early prototype of the Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie. Something about seeing this clearly unstable outcast getting dumped on at every turn to the point of losing his last grasp on reality, really feels like the Arthur Fleck experience. I mean that as a compliment. I love the 2019 Joker, so a Twilight Zone episode sharing those elements was a welcome surprise to see. Eventually, Gart finally has enough of his crap life once his jerk wife ignores him for the final time. So he, at last, gets off at his stop at Willoughby. Oh, that's why they called it that. The Alas, when it looks like things are looking up for old Gart, we get to our twist ending. There was never a Willoughby. The happy strawberry shortcake village was all just a figment of his imagination, and our protagonist was dead all along after killing himself. <laughs> oh, I made myself sad. For you see, Willoughby was actually Gart's hallucinations of heaven, telling him that he could join them and finally be happy if he ended it all. Gart really jumped off his speeding train and died, where a funeral home company branded Willoughby and Sons retrieved his corpse, hinting that this was the last thing he saw before dying. Willoughby was the personification of Gart's suicidal thoughts encouraging him to die, so he can get to his own personal heaven instead of suffering in his terrible existence. Wow, that was a freaking downer. Don't misinterpret, I do love the twist and admire the grand writing here, but this isn't exactly one of the fun Twilight Zones. This was Rod Serling's attempt to deconstruct the Golden Age and the American Dream. Back in the day, guys were supposed to desire a world like Gart's. He had a high-paying job, a big fancy house, lots of money, a hot wife, and was valued as a worker who did what he was told. However, this episode challenged those ideals by showing the cons of this worldview, since it wasn't all it was cracked up to be. 
Gart was unsatisfied with his life, hated his boss, hated his wife, was disconnected with nearly everyone, and simply felt empty beneath it all. Back then, a man couldn't just get a divorce because then kids would run away forever, or he couldn't quit his job or find a new one, because then you'd be viewed as a quitter who can't handle life's hardships. Gart was in despair and had no one to help him heal, leading to his downward spiral because he was overall alone and unfulfilled. Oh, I made myself sad. It's a strong drama for that, and the most amazing part is that Rod Serling pulled it off without a hitch. Suicidal depression being played for seriousness was revolutionary for the decade, since most entertainment went out of the way to avoid approaching it, or usually had it played for laughs. I missed, fortunately for you. For being one of the earliest dramas to treat depression with maturity, I can give it more than enough praise for that alone. Rumor has it that Mr. Serling barely got this out, since of course the execs, business backers, and even sensitive viewers were ready to tear him apart. But Serling deliberately kept it ambiguous if Gart was just imagining the town of Willoughby, or if the city was real after all, and Gart transcended to a higher plane of existence by leaving his human life behind to be one with Dreamland. This was an excuse to say, oh, well, you could think the hero committed suicide, or you could view it as a bittersweet conclusion where he simply moved into the Twilight Zone. You lied. Oh, I... I implied. To that, I tip my hat off to you, good sir. Now, I know I'm probably going to upset all the hardcore fans of this episode, but I think the whole thing was all in his head, and there was no ghostly magic involved. I mean, we see Williams blatantly having psychotic episodes and blacking out, so it seems likely the town of Willoughby was all just an illusion of a place where Gart wanted to be. Heck, even the weird conductor kind of serves as his angel of death, since he constantly tells Williams to try out the area, and almost seems like he's guiding our protagonist to his end. Willoughby. July. Summer. It's 1888. Peaceful, restful, where a man can slow down to a walk and live his life full measure. I miss when death was a magical hot goth lady. Now, in a modern lens, this tale could seem a tad basic, but I think it still maintains its high status as not only a brilliant Twilight Zone episode, but a massive game changer that shook up the entertainment industry by showing us that you could take on such serious topics as long as you kept a grace and elegance in your style. So for that, I can grant it a gold skull, and would recommend it just for the sake of paving the way for more heavy storytelling for generations to come. While I wouldn't promote it as a feel-good story, this episode is a tragic ride, showing you all the good and dark destinations while traveling down... The Twilight Zone. I've never seen such serenity. It was the way people must have lived a hundred years ago. The Twilight Zone. <laughs>